Hi guys, today we're going to learn how to rig a car. This is the first step in animating a car, as it lets you use a rig to automatically control the steering, suspension and wheel animation. It also has controls to let you add in drifting and body movement. You can download this 3D car model for free at the link below, and then you can follow along with our tutorial. This car has been kindly shared by our friends at Polygonic, and it's one of their fantastic models from their traffic add-on, which you can also get at the link below. What's more, all the traffic car models come pre-rigged, so they're super easy to integrate into your Blender project. Let's get started. Okay, so we're gonna start this tutorial by first downloading the Rigger Car add-on. Version six is the latest version. I'll put the link in the description below. You just click here where it says download Rigger Car V6.zip. Okay, then we swap into Blender and then under Edit Preferences, go to Add-ons, Install, go to your Download section, click on Rigger Car, and you click Install Add-on. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is open the blend file that you should download from the link below. If you've already got your own car model, then you can use that as well. I'm going to explain how the car model needs to be set up next. So firstly, let me just show you, this is a lovely model from Polygon Eek. I think if we just zoom in here, you can actually even see they've even modeled the interior for you. It's a very nice model indeed. So if we look at the model first, and then you look at your widget in the top corner, you'll see the model actually is oriented along the X axis. Now for the rigger car model to work, it needs to be oriented down the minus Y axis. So if you look at your axes, let's just rotate the view of the car. And now you can see Y is in the right, minus Y is sort of in the bottom left corner. So we need to orient the car so the bonnet of the car is facing down on this line here. So we can do this quite easily. We press A to select everything, R to rotate, Z to rotate along the x-axis, and if you hold down the control key, you can actually rotate in five degree increments. All right, so if you look at the lines on the screen, you can see the wheels are absolutely aligned perfectly with the grid now. So we just click there and release, and you can see now we've got nice orientation down the y-axis of the car. Now all the car, the car needs to be separated into its own pieces as well. So if I just show you quickly, um, the body is one piece, all four wheels are separate as well, and we also have brake discs separate. And that's the same for all the wheels. I'll just show you that. I'm just going to undo all of that. Just put them all back in the right place. The other thing that should be noted is that the origin point for your wheels in particular, so that's the dot in the center of your geometry, should be in the center of the wheel. And that means so when you press R to rotate an X on the X axis, the wheel should rotate around the center point of the wheel. Okay, so that's kind of first part of the setup. The next thing we need to do is make sure all the names of the parts are correctly named. So you can see in the outline, we already have names for these cars, but they're not quite right for the rigger car add-on. The rigger car add-on likes things in the format of, I'm gonna type it in, so the first thing is the name of the car. So we'll just call this Skoda. Then the body needs to be called Skoda.body. Then the brakes. So this is going to be the back brake on the left. In fact, we just rotate the car around a little bit. So the front of the car is obviously there. And then the left side of the car is this side and the right side of the car is over this side. Okay, so if we click this one, so this is the brake and this is the rear brake or the back brake and this is on the left side. So we're gonna call this Skoda dot wheel brake dot back BK dot L for left. And that's the format we're gonna to work to. I'm just gonna copy this. So the, the brake on the back right should be called this, Skoda dot wheel brake dot back dot right, dot R for right. And the front brakes, We'll start with the left one. Skoda.wheelbrake.front, which is FT.L for left. The front right brake should be called Skoda.wheelbrake.FT.R. And the wheels, similarly, need to be called Skoda.wheel, so we'll delete where it says brake, dot front dot R. I'm going to copy that again. 
Uh, by the way, to copy and paste this, all I'm doing is pressing Control A to select all, then Control C. Then the front left wheel should be called skoda.wheel.ft.l. Back rear, skoda.wheel.bk.r. And finally, skoda.wheel.bk.l. Okay, now all the parts of the model are named correctly for the rigor car add-on. So the next thing we're gonna do is press A to select all of those parts, press Shift A to add an armature, and then press car deformation rig. And because we've named all of the parts correctly, you'll see we've got a bone for the body of the car, and if we just, I'm just going to hide the body for a second. Let me just hide that so you can't see it. You'll actually see we've also got a bone for the brake disc and a bone for each wheel. So in total, there are nine bones now for the car. So if you need to tweak the position of your bones, you can do, but because we've modeled everything correctly and all the origin points were in the right place already, we can move straight onto the next step. So click on your bones. Press the N key, go to where it says rigger car on the right, just down there, and then generate the animation rig. And instantly you can see we've got this rig around the car. So now we're actually in pose mode, which means we can actually move the parts of the rig. So this front part here, I'm just going to click on these front arrows and then press G to grab and you can see we've got the front wheels moving. I'm just going to press escape to get out of that. This rear part, this is for drifting. And if you G to grab, you can actually spin the car and drift like this. This top controller, this controls the body of the car. So if I press G to grab, you can actually see. So for braking or accelerating or turning, you can actually move the body of the car independently. Each wheel has also got control. So if I just click on one of these squares under the wheel, press G to grab, you can see this is how the wheel moves over rough terrain. And finally, this main rig here, this part here, this controls where the car is. So if I just press G to grab, you'll see actually nothing happens at the minute. But if you just want to test to see the wheels moving, up here where it says wheels on Y axis, you can set this to one, press G to grab, and if you move it now, you can actually see the wheels of the car are moving in relation to where the car is. So press escape to get out of that. And just set that back to zero for now. So the final part we're going to look at today is animating the car along a path. The next thing we're going to do in this tutorial, we're going to add a path for the car to animate along. So press shift A, we'll add in a curve, a Bezier curve is fine. If you press 7 to go into top view, and then tab to go into edit mode, we're just going to press S to scale. Uh, we're going to rotate it as well. S to scale a bit more. In fact, let's scale it a bit more as well. Okay, so you can actually adjust the points of the Bezier curve by selecting them, pressing R to rotate. You can also press S to scale to make the handles shorter or longer. And if you want to add another Bezier point, press E to extrude, and you can actually add another Bezier point along the curve like that. I'm just going to scale all this just down a little bit smaller and grab it and just put it over the, near the car. Okay. So tab out of edit mode. And if you just select the point, you can actually see that actually the Bezier curve is a little bit jagged at the, at the minute. So if we click on the Bezier curve and up the resolution preview from 12 to about 100, that makes the curve a lot smoother. Select the rig, go back into pose mode. And if you select this main part of the rig at the bottom with the arrow at the front, if you select that and then click on where it says bone constraints and add a bone constraint, which is follow path. And we're going to choose the target path of the Bezier curve that we've just made. And you can see it's already, already moved onto the Bezier curve, which is great. The forward access axis needs to be minus y because that's what we oriented the car along to at the beginning. Um, so if you check fixed position, 
follow curve, you should now be able to use the offset factor to move the car along the path. So what we'll do, we'll actually put in a short animation. Let's just show you that, okay. So we'll start the offset factor at frame one. So move your playhead to frame one, where it says offset factor, click on the animate property or you can press I to add a keyframe. We're gonna move the timeline to frame 250, offset the curve to one, add another keyframe here by clicking here on the little diamond. And now if we go back into object mode, you can actually play your animation. And you see the car moving. But if we just zoom in on the car, you can actually see the wheels aren't yet moving and the steering wheels aren't moving either. So what you need to do is use the rigger car add-on again, and bake the car steering from frame one to 250 and bake the wheel rotation. And now you see we've got lots of keyframes added. Then actually, if we zoom in closely, let's go back to the beginning of the animation. You can see the car wheels now are starting to move. And you'll see the steering wheel is actually steering the car as well. So now we're well on our way to making a fully fledged car animation. So save your project because we're going to need that in the next video to start working out how to use some of these controls for drifting and braking to make a really exciting car animation. I'll see you in part two.